Matt, when you think back to the Rams game last year, did you suspect then it, it might come to this in terms of what would be your long-term home? Um, no, I, I mean, I was just told to play there, and, and uh, that's all I was thinking about at the time. But uh, looking back at it, I can kind of see um, – maybe their thought process about it. And um, you know, just, I just had to prepare for either left or right um, during the off season. Hey, Matt, uh, first off, congrats on the little one to you. Um, I guess um, uh, Benny Snell was talking to us the other day and, and saying that so far what he's noticed from having Ben Roethlisberger back in camp, back healthy, he's able to, to change the pace of the game a bit more. Um, He's able to uh, make calls at the line a lot quicker. How much of that was an issue for the run game last year, and, and how different does it seem so far now with, with Ben back? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it was an issue. Um, you know, we just had a, a little bit of a younger and uh, less experienced quarterback in uh, when Ben was hurt. So um, those things come over time. Um, but, I mean, now that Ben's back and, um, you know, he's been in this offense for a while, so it's been um, kind of smooth sailing. Uh, just getting back into the swing of things, and, and uh, yeah, it's been it's been fun to watch. Will Graves. Hey, Matt, I'm just sort of curious. You linemen are, are a tight group, yet obviously there's restrictions in place in terms of, you know, what you guys can do. I mean, how do you sort of try to replicate the, the chemistry, even some of the off-field stuff, when you have all this other stuff going on? Um, you know, I mean, like you said, we're a tight knit group. Uh, so when we're in the locker room and, and, um, you know, around each other, you know, it's just talking as if we're, you know, best of friends and all that. And, um, even, even on off the field stuff, we don't, we might not be together as a group, um, in person all the time, but we, uh, we, we have group chats and stuff like that. We're always able to, uh, keep, uh, communication. Chris Damsky. Hey, Matt, um, what could you take me back to when you were at Bloomsburg? Was there a time when it, it, it were scouts, were coaches telling you, hey, you know, you could be a starting NFL lineman? Did you believe it? Was there a point where you did believe it even when you entered the draft process? Did you, you play your last game? Do you think you were done with your football career? Or did you really believe you'd end up being a, in the NFL? Um, so it probably was my junior year. I think my line coach came up to me uh, from Bloomsburg and kind of just started putting the idea in my head, like, hey, these scouts are starting to ask about you or, you know, um, you know, there's, there's people watching you, so just keep doing what you're doing and, and keep improving every day. And, um, I, you know, when I first heard him say it, it's kind of hard for me to believe it because, you know, it's a smaller school and, um, you know, you don't really think that many guys make it that um, – make it big. And, and uh, so senior year came around and um, I started seeing more scouts coming around. And, um, even Even – through the draft process, I was still kind of, you know, I'm, I don't know if that's going to be me one day or what, but it was definitely a dream of mine, and um, I'm glad it's turning out the way I wanted it to. Dale Lawley, let's try you again. Yeah, I'm on uh, Chris Adamski's computer. I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, Matt, um, you've you've played tackle in the league. You've started a bunch of games of tackle. You've even uh, you've played guard. Uh, you even did that a lot last year in training camp, and you've even played some center. Um, do you have a preference of a position where you'd like to play and maybe just find a home? Um, you know, I've always played tackle, high school and college. So, um, you know, I felt probably most comfortable just um, out of it at tackle. But um, the more reps I got at guard through the NFL process and um, and, and practicing in games, it's uh, I don't really have a preference. Um, it's just, you know, it's kind of getting used to one over the other. Jenna Harder. Hey, Matt. We often always kind of hear about wanting to see the progression from guys jumping to year one to year two. Um, obviously, with guys kind of we talked to over the last couple of days, what have you seen from these guys now in their second year, guys like Devin, Deontay, Benny, in terms of them making jumps? Um, you know, you can kind of get a sense of they understand what uh, what is expected of them and, and what we expect from them. And, um, you know, they've, they've done some changes, made some changes to their bodies and, and um, their work ethic. And uh, they're coming back uh, healthy and ready to go. Jordan Hall. 
Tim Benz. Matt, uh, David DeCastro, when he spoke with us, uh, described you as having reported to camp, in his words, a bit more stocky and anchorish. Uh, that's how he described you as the move over to guard from tackle, I guess. Uh, is that true, and how did you accomplish that? And the, the second part to that would be, um, if you have to move out to tackle again at some point, is it going to be difficult with the, whatever body changes you did make? I really didn't do too much. Um, I only put a couple pounds on, if, if that many. Um, so, I mean, if, if it were to be called upon for, for me to go to right tackle, which um, it, it wouldn't be an issue, but I, I have full confidence in Chooks or Banner. Um, they're they're going to hold down the right tackle spot. Noah Strapping. Hey, Matt. Uh, sticking with Zach and Chooks, what have you seen from them so far? And, you know, is there a sense that they're a little more hungry this offseason? Um, they're, they're both doing a great job, you know. Um, you know, uh, it's been known that there's, there's going to be an open competition for that spot, and they're, they're both showing up and, and working hard. And, um, you know, just they're, they're, they're hungry for it, and it's what you want. Hi, Matt. Uh, Matt, uh, you have always uh, – work very hard at your craft and you've clearly established yourself as a quality tackle and certainly as a guard but you are approaching your contract year how much would you like to remain with the Steelers and how much do you think about the impending negotiations um you know it'd be great to stay here um, I'm from Pennsylvania so it's uh, closer to my family and uh, friends and stuff like that so uh, I think my wife and I have, have started um, kind of this as our, our home so uh, you know I'd, I'd love to stay here uh, but you know with the with the contract stuff coming up I can't really focus on that right now I just got to focus on the season at hand and um, you know just take it one game at a time all right last one for Alan Saunders Hey Matt, how much uh, you know in this off season of preparing for this? Have you really uh, gone over the tape from that Rams game last year with a fine tooth comb? And uh, what did that experience teach you or inform you about uh, what you have coming for you this season? Um, I just kind of looked at it and and uh, it just kind of really focused on the differences between tackling and playing guard. You know, there's there's more space as a tackle that you have to cover and, and with um, some shiftier guys, but I mean. Like you mentioned, Aaron, Aaron Donalds, uh, you know, he's a great player and uh, shifty as well. So um, as a guard, you're going to kind of have to see both uh, the, the more power guys and then also the shifty guys. And, um, you know, that's just something I'm going to have to uh, continue to work on and, and get used to and get comfortable with. Hey, Sean, how you doing? Um, good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, my question is, um, last year um, with Munch gone, did they ask you a lot to be involved in the game plan, maybe the run game coordinator stuff? And um, is it was it if you did was it difficult being a guy in the position for the first year to feel comfortable enough to step up, step out, and say something that you would like to see in there? You know, uh, that's a good question. You know, as a whole, we, we we work on that game plan together as a whole. You know, it's just not just the coach Randy or or even the tight ends or whatever, it's all of us. And uh, we, 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 we go into a room and we, we formulate a plan and we, we stick to that plan. And as for me being a first year guy, yeah, you're gonna have those jitters and stuff and things like that. But you know, it's just those things you're gonna work yourself through. And you know, you get more comfortable as the, as, as the games progress, you know, and get comfortable. You know, I was already comfortable with the guys per se, but you know, just the, the game planning part probably a little bit, yeah. Will Graves. Hey, Sean, just curious, was last year tough to evaluate because of the challenges you faced at the quarterback position where defenses obviously are not going to try to defend those two guys the way they would have defended seven? I mean, DeCastro was on with us, you know, a couple weeks ago and said that last year just sucked. That was his assessment. But did it make it a tough to get a read on what you guys could and couldn't do just because of the unique circumstances? Um, yeah, I mean, but we can play that role, man. I mean, we can sit here and say that kind of stuff. But, you know, Coach T, you know, he's got that philosophy, next man up, you know, and we can't buy into that. It's just one of those deals, you know. we got to go out and compete every week and, you know, stick to the plan that we have at hand and, and, and go try to win a game, you know. And, that, and that's what we tried to do week in and week out last year. I think all these guys had their hand in the pile 
and they were fighting every week, you know, and, I, and that's what I appreciate them for doing that. You know, it's just one of those deals. But it's next man up, man. We got we to gotta win a game. So that's kind of how we, we looked at it. Tim Bettis. No, it seemed like uh, in the offseason, the team did a nice job uh, preparing itself for Ramon's loss by signing Wisniewski and drafting Dotson, but the decision was still made to move Matt over to guard anyway. Can you explain uh, why that decision was done in the manner that it was and um, what you think of the process of uh, developing Banner and Shooks in the right tackle spot? Well, a lot of it had to do with the, the timing of it too. You know, you know, we're in a we were in a pandemic in the spring. We lost our whole spring, you know. And um, when it comes to that time, the evaluation period kind of gets cut in half, you know. And, and we, you know, I lost you know whatever many practices and able to see guys, even maybe even uh, anchor at right or maybe ba at Dotson at, at left guard and so forth. So it was just one of those deals. Where, you know, the time got cut. So, and I had seen Anchor go in there, play guard at a game last year. I've seen Chooks play tackle. I've seen Banner play tackle. So we went into this idea, you know, we, we got to evaluate, we had to evaluate fast. So we we're going to start there and then make our evaluation from there. Um, and, and both those guys outside have done a good job. Anchor's done a great job, you know, moving. That's one thing I'll, I'll, I'll credit at Anchor. He, he, you know, he played a high level at tackle last year. And he didn't bat an eye when we asked him to move inside. He's ready to go. And we, we appreciate that. Dale Lolly. Yeah, Sean, um, just wondering in terms of you've got three weeks before you have to go play a game for real. What kind of timeline do you have on making a decision at that right tackle position of, of who the yeah, starter is going to be? And how much is that? process kind of retarded a little bit by the fact that you don't have uh, any preseason games to look at well you just said it right there you know the evaluation has to be fast but I'm also I'm not in a hurry about it you know that could be a, a deal where I'm gonna let them compete all the way up to the, in, even in the week of practice you know um, I'm not gonna go make that decision right now or kind of be forced into it you know the, the, you know they're out there competing every day they're, they're flopping positions they got they're playing big tight end they're playing the, the regular tackle spot they're doing. They're doing all the stuff we've done in the past here. And it's just it's something I, got, I know I still got time with it a little bit, you know, because, you know, that, like you said, we don't play till next month. So there's no, no reason to rush that situation for those two. Just let them continue to compete at a high level that they're doing at practice and just kind of sit back and let it, let it work itself out. No strapping. Hey, Sean, sticking with the right tackle competition, um, have you seen anything from Zach or Chooks? I know it's early um, and you do have a while, but have you seen anything from either of them that kind of give them the upper hand? I'll, I'll say this about both those guys, you know, and we sat there in a pandemic and we virtually met all spring. And, you know, I was harping on all the guys, just not those two about being in great shape. And, I'll, you know, I'll commend both those guys. Both those guys came in in the best shape of their lives that I've seen them since I've been here. And, um, I, you know, I commend them both. And they're both, you know, they, they know what they're, what they're practicing for every day. They're just not going out to practice. They're going out competing for a job, every rep, every drill, every walkthrough. That's meaningful to those guys. And they've done a great job with it, you know. And I just continue to get the same effort and we'll make that decision when it comes game week. Hey, Sean, you've been – this is your ninth training camp. I can't even imagine how many, um, like, undrafted or, or waiver guys that you've seen. Do you remember Matt coming in, and was there anything that either stood out at the beginning that he said, hey, you know, of all the guys that come through like this, he, he has a shot to be an NFL starter, or did he kind of work his way into it and kind of develop into that over the years? Yeah, when Matt came in, he was – um, we, we looked at him, you know, when, when we first saw him, you know, we, we thought for sure that, you know, he was a big, strong guy. So we thought maybe inside to start him. And then as he progressed over the next couple of, you know, years or whatever, you could see his body changing. And, you know, you can commend our weight room guys with that, man. They were, they completely transformed that guy's body, and he's done a great job at with his nutrition and everything else. And you could tell, like, he leaned up, he looks good, you know. And um, he went out and competed at a right tackle spot for us for a couple of games, you know. And I think it was in preseason and so forth. And we're like, oh, dang, this guy can do it now. This guy's got the athletic ability to set out there right back on play and do that. But that's another thing to him, man. I mean, he can go in and he can play multiple positions. It gives our room flexibility, you know. So if a guy needs a, maybe a day off or whatever, he can step into another position if needed. Who's 
Mike Prezuda. Sean, when you moved Matt last year, uh, was that master plan, throwing something at the wall, something in between? Uh, how did you arrive at that decision collectively, and how much of what you saw influenced him playing there now? Well, we were going to that game week, and as you know, we were playing the Rams, who has one of the best D linemen in the NFL uh, inside, and Aaron Donald. And, um, you know, I thought to myself, my, what, you know, my, my job is to put the best five out there. And, and that week, that was the best five. Now, I come in anchored to, uh, for what he did against, you know, Aaron and, stuff and so forth. You know, he played hard, and there were situations where he had a bunch of one-on-ones against the guy, and, he, you know, he performed well. So that's, that's another thing. I mean, you're sitting here, you know, your evaluation gets cut, and you're sitting here, and you're like, well, what do you, what, 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 who are the best five? Well, I know Anchor can do that. He can go inside and play guard at a high level. I know he can go out the right tackle, play a high level. All right, well, who's the next guy up? And that's that's where we're at right now. We're finding that next piece, you know, to set our line for the year. All right, this is the last question we have time for today. Brian Batko. Hey, Sean. Um, signing the veteran this offseason and, and Stefan Wisniewski, I mean, I won't even – ask you general impressions of him because I think everybody in football would probably say he's smart and a professional and, and all that stuff but how is he balancing I guess the willingness to kind of do whatever you guys ask him to do learn multiple spots versus competing to try to start because uh, that's what he's done for most of his career yeah you know you just said it right there Wiz is a, it's a true professional you know and I could tell that since day one in the virtual meetings and then once I met him in person here at camp and we got in the room. I could tell. Wow, this no wonder this guy's done it as long as he has. You know, he, he he's done a great job in the room. He's he's helping the young guys along. Then you go out to the field. He you know he's, he he can play multiple positions too. You know, he's playing both guard spot. He's playing center spot. You know, and he and he has better than I. You know, he goes out there and compete. And just like you said, he's competing for a job too. You know, it's just one of those deals. You know, at the you know he can go out there and he compete if he if he's at a high level and we feel comfortable with him. We'll we'll put him in there at guard. And, and you know. Oh, and that's just one of those deals.